Yo, what is up G Crew? I'm Chris G bringing you guys another video and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to use speed ramping in your videos to make them 10 times better. So without further ado, let's get started. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that little sequence. Let me know down below what you thought of it, what your favorite part was, but without further ado, let's get started with the tutorial. So first thing we're gonna do is, as you can see, this is the project that I had that you guys literally just saw. So we're gonna import a, um, a new sequence. So all you gotta go is come to this little tab, come to import, not import. You're gonna add a new item, which is a sequence that we were just talking about. And this won't really matter too much. Um, as you'll see right now, we're gonna find the footage that I wanna use. So it's going to be, if I remember correctly, this one, yeah. So you'll notice it'll just change the sequence to that. So we're gonna delete the audio because we don't really need the audio for this um, tutorial. When you mess with speed ramping, the audio gets really distorted and it does not sound natural at all. So I would suggest you just delete the audio separate from the video. So yeah. Now that we have that done, let's actually look at the footage. I was trying to see how I can come up to the, 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 the side view mirror. And then I also wanted to get the wheels and the tail light, but I didn't get all of the wheels. I wanted to, but unfortunately I couldn't get it all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from the rear view mirror right there. And then we're gonna end it right before the, um, we'll end it like right there. Something like that. So what we're gonna do to help it is we're, oh, what's going on? So we're gonna move this to the beginning by just dragging it. And then we're going to help it by putting it at 50% speed. So I shot this at 60 frames a second. So if you shot this at 24 frames a second, it probably wouldn't work if you half the speed, simply for the fact that it's gonna be jittery and it's not gonna look smooth. Whenever you're working with slow motion, 60 frames a second is the best bet to go for it because anything less than 24 frames a second, you're gonna see that it's very jittery and it's not, it doesn't look nice at all. So if you're gonna try to go half speed or you know whatever, you want it to make sure that at least 24 frames are being displayed for each second of your video. So I know since I shot it at 60 frames a second and if I half speed it, that's 30 frames a second. So that's over 24, which would be fine. So if I shot this at 50 frames a second, that would still work because that would be 25, 25 frames a second. So yeah. Now, if we look at this footage, it looks decent. Honestly, it looks fine. Um, going to the wheel and then moving up to the tail light. So that looks pretty good. The only problem I have with it is right here at the very end, I, I like knock it with something, my gimbal. So what we're gonna do here is speed ramping and warp stabilizer, uh, warp stabilizing, they don't work well together. Oh, they don't work at all <laughs> together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna nest this clip. And the way to do that is you right click it and then you hit nest and then it makes its own sequence within that. So what that pretty much does is it gets rid of the speed duration or speed ramping. It keeps it, but you won't be able to mess with it unless you go deeper into that uh, composition. So you're pretty much making a video within a video. Uh, yeah, the more you do this, the more you'll understand. So best, my best advice is to just keep editing and you'll understand the terms that I'm trying to explain to you guys. But you'll notice here, if I go to the effects control panel, the duration, right? I don't need to go there. I can just go here and you'll see it's at 100%. But in reality, if I press play, it's going at 50%. And that's because of what I just said earlier. So what we're gonna do now to fix that uh, shake is we're gonna add warp stabilizer to it. That way it can fix the little shakiness that happened at the end. The rest of the clip looks pretty fine to me. But, um, but yeah, we'll see how that looks. And um, from there, we'll just have to mess with the speed ramping and that'll be it. So all we gotta do is wait for this, uh, 
for the work stabilizer. All right, so it looks like it just finished stabilizing. So we're gonna check it out and see what it looks like. Clean, that looks really good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna save the project. Always save it after you do something like that just because you don't want it to just crash on you and then you lose or you have that wasted time. Thankfully, I have a pretty decent computer, so it doesn't take me too long, but those of you that don't have the best or the highest quality computer, it can take quite a while. But the warp stabilizing does all the work for you, so you don't really have to worry about that. So that's the benefit of having Premiere Pro. So now that we have this, we can now speed ramp it. So what I'm gonna do is actually import the song that I used. Let's, let's play it to see what it sounds like. So use that portion of the song. So I'm gonna cut it there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it over here and I want this clip to match with that. So I'm gonna see where I can line it up. So I have three hitting points, right? The mirror, the wheel, and the tail light. So I wanna match those with the beat and yeah, that's pretty much what I need to focus on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna listen to it one more time. So I just need to come in here one more time and take a look. All right, so I have an idea of what I wanna do with the speed ramping, with the music, so let's get to it. First thing we're gonna wanna do is since it's warp stabilized, we're gonna have to nest it one more time. And then from there, we can finally work on the speed ramping. So we're gonna go right click or it says effect. So we're gonna go to time remapping and we're gonna allow it to be, I guess, speed ramped. So we're gonna hit P on our keyboard to bring the pin tool. Um, it's very useful to know the shortcuts that way you can just edit and your workflow will be so much better. So I'm gonna see where I want to have this done. So right here is kind of like where I wanted to start speeding up. So you're just gonna hit or click right there, wherever you want. And then you'll notice that if you hover over here on the timeline on this clip, you'll notice that there's two arrows that are coming up. So what you can do there is you can click and drag up and it'll speed up the clip. So if I were to play it for you, just like this, see how it just speeds it up. So now it's all about slowing it back down. So what we wanna do as well is make it a lot smoother. So we're gonna, we can, make these come further away from each other, like so. Oh, doesn't want to, question mark. All right, that's as far as they're gonna go from each other, I guess. So we're gonna look at it one more time. I'm gonna put it back to where it was. All right, whatever. Anyway, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna slow it back down at the little snare hit right here. And it lines up already perfectly with the wheel. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make another point right here and we're gonna have it stretch out over here. What we're gonna do is lower, whoops, didn't mean to do that. If you ever make a mistake guys, just control Z is your friend. So now that we've done that, what we can do is lower this all the way back down to 100%. So that way it plays it in slow motion again. And you'll notice guys that it's stretching out the clip again. It, um, whenever you're increasing the speed, obviously it's gonna play for a short amount of time. Um, of course it's not gonna play the same amount of time because you're playing it faster. So anyway, uh, just thought I had to say that out there. So I'm gonna put it at 100% speed, which is technically 50%. Guys, remember we had this to be nested. So now we're gonna move this over here. And then at the snare hit is when I want it to be already slow. So now if I were to play it, it's gonna look like this. So you can see how things are starting to line up. Um, it's very key to get this stuff sorted out very um, precisely with the beat because it makes it um, so much more clean. So if you notice, everything's very to the beat. And then when that instrument where it hits that high note, I want it to start moving up again and slowing down again to the tail light 
on the next beat, which is also a snare hit, I believe. Let's see. It's actually a bass hit that I'm gonna slow it down at. And then I'm gonna cut off the video when it hits the snare hit. So I'm gonna show it to you guys like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit P on our keyboard once again, hit the timeline, and then that's when you can make the moves. So over here, we're gonna speed it up again. And we're gonna see, this is where the bass hits. So I want it to be like right there, honestly. And then I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard again. Or actually before that, let's, let's take a look. So you can see guys how it starts to just move like, kind of like very abruptly. If you wanna smoothen it out, we can do what we did right here. And then um, it'll look a lot better. So what we can do is just separate these two. I don't know why it's giving me a hard time um, selecting these two clips. There you go. All right, so I found the part that I want to slow it down at, which is right here. And here, I kind of want the slow motion to be very abrupt, which always looks cleaner sometimes. Not all times, but um, most of the time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have it at 100% again. And you'll notice it's making keyframes, guys, and it's right here and up here as well. So if you come down here, you'll notice it's making the keyframes. So it's nice and smooth, you know where everything's at, and you can stay very organized with all your keyframes. So now, now that we have it set to have it on the beat, it'll look way nicer. So now, so I see that's where it ends. With the snare hit, so I'm just gonna delete the rest. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. That's pretty much it, guys. That's speed ramping for you. It's really not that complicated. Um, you don't have to warp stabilize your clips for clips like this that were a little bit shaky, especially towards the end. Um, it just helps you have smoother footage. You have this tool, why not use it? But um, speed ramping is very effective, guys, to enhance your videos. I use them all the time. Uh, before, I would watch videographers such as Mike Visuals, and he's really good with his drone shots. And I was like thinking to myself, why are his drone shots so much better than mine? And I noticed that he sped ramped all his clips, and it makes it a lot better. So now, whenever I do my drone shots, um, I speed ramp them and they look 10 times better. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I just want you guys to keep creating. So without further ado guys, have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching this. Please comment, like, subscribe. Peace.